Kira. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. I got a very special, unconventional person with us today, Kira Pollan. She founded this com a couple of companies, uh, and she's doing like creative publishing and distribution for like comics and all sorts of crazy things. So I reached out to her directly. I was like, hey, you'd be great for the podcast. So here she is to share what she's doing now with these companies and what she's doing with her life that is super unconventional. And Kira asked me to ask her how many lives humans have versus cats. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with the question she put it before we hopped on here. So I figured I'd throw a curveball on her. Um, all right. Um, the reason I said that was because in my life, I have already done 20 different things, each one having absolutely nothing to do with the other. And um, it was kind of strange. I don't think too many people have had that many diverse work uh, situations. I'm a writer, so I've written a book. Um, I've written scripts. I've, I've written, well, I produced a graphic novel. I also founded a fishing company on the island of Sakhalin, which is not exactly the most logical uh, jump from writing. Um, I sold films. I also went and um, opened up the international market for a hair retail company, which, as you can tell, has a lot to do with writing and a lot to do with fishing. So. I'm just wondering if a cat has nine lives, how many more of these do I have to go through? <laughs> and I've also had a company with Walter Cronkite and Pierre Salinger, where I interviewed uh, top politicians worldwide, including very interesting characters. And I'm not even covering everything. It's as if every segment has a three-year lifespan and then hurls me on to the next one so if a cat can survive all that maybe i've survived all that maybe we can now maybe i could change and <laughs> become a cat and just sleep <laughs> for 20, 20 hours a day i don't know if you, any of that actually even makes sense but it's just the idea of the nine lives for sure. Yeah. A lot of people go through life and life changes. And then a lot of people have to deal with it as like a loss. So like, let's just say someone is like an athlete. Now they have to retire from being an athlete. It's like a whole new life now. Yes. However, you've been more of a chameleon and you've changed your colors over the course of time. How come, how come you, you've jumped from thing to thing? Ah, every time one went into completion, before I even had the time to think, a next door opened with an interesting opportunity. I love challenges. Anyone that tells me I can't do something, it's an automatic green button that I must go and investigate to see if I can actually do it or not. And the way that I operate is if I can think through and visualize um, the process of getting something done, then I feel that it can be done. So therefore, I just hurl myself into it until it gets done. And how do you, is it just if like, if I come to you, I was like, Kira, you can't do this. Are you automatically going to do it? Or is it more of like... <laughs> Accepting the challenge and being interested in something that has allowed you from jump from films to writing to now what you're doing in the digital comic space. I won't hurl myself into everything, obviously. As I said, if I can think it through when I'm told that this is a challenge, that, oh, my God, uh, here is some here is a great idea, but how are we going to do it? Or if I think of an idea and 
I wonder if I can do it because I think, ah, here's a good idea. And then a certain amount of gestation time takes place where you think things through. And even if it's never been done and everyone tells you it's very difficult, if I can think it through completely and feel the confidence that, yeah, actually, if one does A, B, C, D, hmm, why not? I never, when I started the company that I am working on now, which is Zing Technologies, Zing Technologies owns the assets, the technology, and the production me, the production assets of the two apps that we created. I knew nothing about technology. Not that I know that much today, but I could think through of who I should go to to get it done. And some of my experience was applicable to this particular uh, challenge. But it... As we progressed, I realized how much I really did not know. <laughs> and then it was all the time, how is this going to get solved? Yeah. How is that going to get solved? You have the opposite problem of a lot of people. Like a lot of people are like, hey, I want to do this or hey, I want to start that company. And they just never do versus you just throw yourself into it. And that's not something that's taught. It seems like it's just a given talent that you have to be able to jump into the deep end, even if you don't know how to swim, and then just figure it out. I come from the film business. My father was a film producer. And um, I grew up surrounded by producers wondering how on earth they're going to get something done, solved, etc. So to be in the film business, you've got to be super nimble. You've got to figure out uh, solutions to psychological problems, physical problems, uh, legal problems, um, uh, logistics, geographic, everything, all the time. So I also lived in Italy, which also adds a little bit of, you've got to think nimbly because they're, they're nothing structured functions anywhere in films or, or in Italy. And I think that those two those two um, elements, I don't know how you want to call them, were very instructive in, for instance, one day I was sitting at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel in Los Angeles and um, I was about 25 years old. I had to absolutely find a way to make money because it was the end of the world yet again. A friend of mine, Mario Casal, who produced Terminator, Rambo, and so forth, tell me, oh my God, there's this Korean producer that hired Ennio Morricone to do the music for a film called um, uh, Seven Graves for Rogan. He doesn't speak Italian. He has no idea what he's doing. Um, the director has given up. It's a bloody mess. Why don't you go and take care of it? Now, I knew about music <laughs> on a film about as much as I know about astronomy today, give or take. But I figured I'll figure out who does know once I'm in Italy. And I just took the plane, got there, called a few people, got the damn thing done met Ennio Morricone, who looked at me going, you're the representative of the producer and the director, you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we sat down in front of the old machines, and eventually he saw that I wasn't a moron, and that I had relatively decent ideas, and so we collaborated, and we managed to get the music done, finished, in time, and in budget. So it was really a matter of just saying, okay, fine, I'm going to go figure it out. And this is a little episode of um, just stuff that happened. What was like, what was that like growing up with your father being in the film business? It, it was a coin with many facets, not two. Uh, you have 
you meet every day stars, people that are looked upon as celestial. Each one of them has a problem. Um, you are in constant flux. There is very little security. There is absolutely no guarantee of anything with a capital A. Uh, there is always the open door of taking things into your hands and seeing whatever it is that you can do, which is, can be very interesting. You can get egg on your face at any given moment. Um, you never know. Plans are ridiculous because the moment you make a plan, it falls flat on its face. And uh, you're unsure what country you'll be tomorrow. So at any given point, it could be like, hey, I need you to go to France, Italy, anywhere. Yes. And you just have to say yes, like, yeah, I'll go. It depends uh, if you're asking me growing up um, once working or growing up as um, the schooling. Schools, I was dragged to 15 different schools per city um, and changed cities. Well, many times, Spain, Italy, France, England, Austria, um, you know, as uh, as a professional or well, in the profession, because at that point I couldn't possibly say I was a professional of anything. Uh, it was, yes, indeed, uh, whatever comes up, uh, be ready to snap to it. Because if you don't say yes, someone else is out there who is willing to do whatever it takes to be successful in Hollywood. Is that how it goes? This was not in Hollywood. This was more in Europe. Europe, okay. Not that that makes much of a difference because it's, well, I guess Hollywood is maybe a bit more structured. I wouldn't, I can't say. It's not so much that somebody else will jump in. It's that that's what you want to do. succeed at any way possible is that what the well, mindset is and th at that point in your matter, life it's not a matter so much of succeeding as it is a matter of um an interesting challenge all the time if this get, needs to be done let's figure out how to get it done and you get it done it's a whirlwind of action it's a whirlwind of continuous changing scenery action so you solve these problems. What? Well, not what, all. As you well, can not imagine. all the problems, but you would you would help you would help with these problems to find solutions. Do you? Was it your mindset that was like different than these people that were working on these films that allowed you to be successful? Like, what was that? I wasn't the only one. There were there are a few such as like me. I'm not uh, unique. Um, but when you unite a group of people that are that have those qualifications, um, and those personality traits, then things get done. And uh, there is a constant advancement. So, you know, so what you learned from those experiences, by getting things done, how is that translating to now in 2024 with the projects that you're working on currently? Like, because these are like well, two completely it's, it's, time periods, but I'm sure exactly, there's a lot of overlap. Um, there is very little overlap except that, all right, so if I can't find money in the VC world, let's look in uh, private equity. If I can't find it in private equity, let's see how I can get customers. How do I get customers? Now, these customers are different from the other customers. Which ones are the most susceptible to be interested in what I do? So, no, if this one doesn't work out, hmm, okay, if I can't try, if that road doesn't work, let's try the other road. So it's constant. It's always, I think, every entrepreneur um, is faced with these problematics of having to find it, I don't think many entrepreneurs have decided, all right, I'm going to do this. This is a straight line to success. And I'm going to talk to this one person who's going to 
invest in me, then I'll talk to the other person who's going to give me all the assets that I need, and then I'll talk to the customers, and it'll be dandy. <laughs> so uh, the the being nimble and the thinking of all the different things that one can do. Um, to give an example, so how did Zing Technologies begin? It started with because of my running around in my younger days uh, and seeing how many people read comic books. Even if I knew nothing about technology, once I was shown a little bit of how iPads work and uh, different apps um, and all the things that are in the horizon coming up, Having been in Rome and learning a lot of Italian from comic books, I figured, hmm, if one were to add audio to images, people would be able to learn a language much easier. So I united a team that was uh, with a Bulgarian CTO called Chris Dyakov, who's really fabulous. He's an architect as well as a uh, just a extremely imaginative and uh, also nimble CTO, which is also necessary. And we figured by the licenses to many comic books, uh, create a studio, create an app whereby one can upload comic books, insert um, texts in different languages, insert audio so that you can read different comic books, all genres, all ages, all uh, subjects, um, all levels, uh, by tapping on the texts and hearing the different voices in different languages, right? Some fast, some slow. So it allows you to uh, uh, finesse your pronunciation. And by having all sorts of different science fiction, romance, uh, humor, whatnot, from companies that are well known, such as Boom, Top Cow, uh, Image, uh, the French ones, the Belgian ones, the, from all over the world, we created the app LingoZing with metrics and everything that really helps learn a language without even thinking about it, because it's fun. It's not, oh my God, I'm going to have to sit here and learn a language. This is just terrible. And um, also helps learn thematics, because one can actually learn any subject from a comic book or a graphic novel. It's always a matter of storytelling. If the story is good, people are engaged, they want to know what happens to the characters. And if, in addition, there's a layer of information that seeps through, great. So to prove the point, uh, we created a graphic novel on cryptocurrency. I think I was probably the first one to do that and um, uploaded it to LingoZing. And um, then it actually won amazing prizes, such as won the prize from the Minister of Economy of France, uh, voted for by 600 students, so not a political prize, a real prize, um, as the best tool to teach economics. So I went from language learning to economics with technology coming from comic books and then it came it became evident that it was very difficult to raise money on it on education everybody was talking about it. yeah yeah we must educate we must educate but when it comes to all right <laughs> put some money on the line it's, oh, i don't know if we can make money on education oh god what are we going to do so ghost here ghost there and um which by the way um was a little bit uh, not well thought through completely because I was not aware that it took about five years for the educational cycle to start making money. But once it does make money, it's a guaranteed continuity because it enters into the curriculum. But I thought that it would go very fast one year and 
year two we're in profit. Well, that didn't happen. So, <laughs> but the the potential, oh my God, it's still there. So we figured, all right, in the meantime, what we're going to do, we're going to use the same technology and use it for pure entertainment. Because once it's packaged as pure entertainment, as opposed to any educational teaching, learning, et cetera, then everybody gravitates and it goes much faster. So yeah, that's an excellent idea. Let's do that. And um, with that in mind, we created Legend HQ. So Legend Headquarters, Legend HQ. And there we went for manga because manga is just so cool. And again, you know, switch, 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 switch. All right, now how do we get this going? Oh my God, it's so difficult to get the Japanese publishers because, you know, they will never be the first ones to do anything. <laughs> so let's go for big brands. There is a, com a soccer company called PSG, Paris Saint-Germain, very well known, huge company. And they're very active in new things and uh, communicating with Gen Z, communicating with Alpha, communicating in general and being very proactive in um, just cool stuff that has to do with soccer. And also not necessarily only with soccer, not limited to. So we met with them and they said, all right, so let's take PSG manga, put it on Legend HQ, make it multilingual, make it interactive, make it everything and let's go for it. So that's what we did and that opened the door to other partnerships and um, now we are looking for funds to open up the studio. Um, add AI to create the first um, uh, automated studio whereby it could open to user-generated content, which means that artists all over the world can upload their manga, their comic books, open up webtoons, because we have a patent for an extraordinary reader that goes in all directions. And we just need to tell it to be able to read Webtoons. And then Webtoon can also be added to the platform. And by enabling financing an automated studio that would then be able to identify image, text, language, it could automatically populate the app. So that's what, you know, all of a sudden that's the next step, which it was not necessarily, I was thinking that I was going to be creating uh, comics and manga. So as you see, it goes from one to the other, to the other, to the other. But I do think that eventually both entities, Linguizing as well as Legend HQ, that have little by little um, created a very strong identity for each one, uh, that they will go mainstream big and people will be able to enjoy an interactive um, app and talk to their artists and to, because you can also record yourself, uh, for instance, over an image and share that with your um, uh, community. So your community can then share it on with others. Uh, artists would be able to call to their community and say, would you like to do the voices for my next comic book? And then the fans can be all excited and go, that's fabulous. I want to do the voice of character X in your next uh, chapter of series B, whatever it's called. So it answers what um, what the comic book, manga, webtoon world is asking for. And in the educational department, it answers, uh, Linguizing answers what um, the call for 
inclusion, intercultural communication, because each country has different forms of visuals, different stories. All of that can go to Linguzine and with the multi languages be able to allow mobiles can be read by the smallest village in the most remote place. So it's a great venue for education and communication and learning on all levels. So you see the two different apps, how it went from one to the other and escalated from here to here, from there to there, each time adding a different language and adding automatically a layer of different cultural elements. What I'm That's thinking is like, <laughs> like, let's just say I'm in third grade and I go to art class. When I was in school, it was like, all right, you're going to make your little your little cup and we're going to put it in this furnace. Then you're going to paint it. Then it's all going to melt together. So what you're saying is in this new new idea, this new concept, let's just say I go to this class and it's like an art class, but we're making a comic book as a class where everyone in the class is a different character. And at the same time, they can learn a new language is like that, like the idea here a little bit, like it's like a, like you can create your own story like together and learn languages and make it interactive. Is that like the concept and the idea? What we upload is a finished comic book or a finished manga. So how it is created is not what we do for, it's what others wish to upload. If we are asked to create a manga or a comic book, then we do it internally and professionally. But I like your idea of having an art school uh, decide to create a comic book together. That I think would be really cool. And then they could each one do their voice and upload to Linguzing if, they, if it is for language learning and also for legend actually for just pure entertainment. But I love that idea. Yeah, because like you're combining learning multiple skills on one platform. So like you could be someone could be learning like all these different things, but not even realizing they're learning it. And if they do it a little bit every day, it's just like all of a sudden they can speak a new language, which here in the United States, most people can only speak English versus if you travel abroad. Everyone speaks like multiple languages. Yes, Um it's Legend HQ is for entertainment and uh, just the, the huge fan base of people that just love uh, comic books, manga, and so on, and who crave a, a, a enhanced experience, even trying, I think. Is that, what the, is that what the concept is, is to learn a language without even thinking about it? Is that the whole... Whole concept. Essence, yeah, because when I was, I noticed that when I was learning, a le learning, I was no, when I was living in Italy, and um, I was reading these comic books in Italian that, in fact, I didn't understand half. But the audio and the visual together have a impact on retention and understanding. Now, if you add voices to it with the double language simultaneously, then you have context, storytelling, audio, visual, and engagement of because it's storytelling. And all that together, unconsciously, the you learn word after word and the context of the language because you hear it. Mm. And the other thing is that People don't, they are insecure, they are shy, they don't necessarily want to practice uh, the words that they have learned in public because it may sound bizarre. And that way they can record themselves on the app, hear how, they, how it, it sounds, uh, compare it to the recording of how it should sound, and um, that way rehearse by themselves so as to be confident once they 
merge with a group of students or, you know, in a party or whatnot. It reminds me of a interactive version of when you take a language. So like when I took Italian at, uni at the university, we watched La Vita Bella, mm -hmm. the Italian movie, so we could practice listening to it in an interactive way. This is like taking it to the next level of not just yeah. watching a movie in another language, but fully immersing yourself into it through what you're doing. And it's self-paced. Films are fabulous, but there are two problems. One, it's it has a it has a speed of its own, so you're not going to stop, rewind, stop, rewind. It just it doesn't work. The other thing is that the subtitles are not exactly, and the subtitles are only in one language, so you hear too fast and you don't have the time to read. That doesn't necessarily reflect. On the linguizing, you can hear it at your pace. And there's a language slider where you see both languages together. So you have image and the two languages. So you can go as slow or as fast as you want. But and you can um, uh, delve deep into the comparative of the two languages again for as long as you want. So you can go very fast or you can go very slow or you can go with one language only, or you can go with the two languages only, both, or you can go with no languages and you just listen very slowly or very fast, or the whole thing can be played to you with one of our features that is played. So you can just sit there like a couch potato and listen to the whole comic book being you know, voiced to you. Is this available now? Like, could I yes. go on and check it out? Yes. And where would I find it? iOS or App Store, Android. Awesome. Well, Kira, this is exciting. I'm going to check it out because I love to learn it. Well, not learn, but when you learn like Spanish and Italian, like I have, I've taken like three years of each, but like you don't use it every day. Um, it's in my brain somewhere, but I needed to come back out. So I'm glad that someone like you has taken the initiative to create an interactive tool where even if you're not around a language, you could still be in the language so you don't Lose let those it. muscles atrophy that it's are important. So, it goes so fast, it's horrible. So I strongly encourage, I look at films all the time. Well, I try to look at films all the time in the languages I speak so as to refresh the brain because it um, it's very difficult to... The, to keep up with all the things that we need to do with uh, the pressures of daily life, with everything that is on the table every single day. Well, you're doing it all, Kira. Thank you so much. And we'll see everyone next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, Josh. Bye.